Okay, here's my first club experience. First primary coach club experience. It's with the Bridgewater Club. And I'm not going to give dates or years. This is, the stuff is the same. This is about two decades ago, a long time ago. This is the very first encounter that I had with a club. And it was about three, two, maybe three years into my coaching, maybe four years. I think it was three years. Um, so the rating, I'm going to give it two thumbs down. It was a bad encounter going into it and a bad encounter leaving it. And I'll go into details as to why. Um, but I did have... Um, see if I can fit the number in there. I did have, a, I count, you know, I'd average about seven really awesome special encounters. I'm not going to go into all of those, but I'll go into a couple of them just to give you an idea of what, incorp what um, qualifies for a special, a special, a, a good, wonderful experience. Okay, so now, why was it bad going in? I got contacted by the club in late spring one year. Um, I believe I had been working in that club kind of part-time, one day a week, for part of seasons, uh, doing dance, partnering, some choreography. I coached a couple kids there, just guest coached. Um, so they were familiar with me, and I had, a, I'm going to say, about a two-year experience with them, maybe a year. I had a good relationship with their head coach, who was leaving the, the club. Um, I actually think there's another coach that left the club, too. Anyway, so they asked me to take on, they called me, uh, I believe it was the president that called me, but I can't be sure, but I know later on throughout most of the, my time with the club, I basically only had uh, uh, communication with the president, whose name I don't remember. I, remember. I don't remember her daughter's name, but I think it was Jessica, but um, no idea what the mother's name was. Maybe I never knew what the mother's name was. Uh, she was the only one I ever had contact with, which was one of the reasons for this. She contacted me in late spring and asked me if I would, she said I'd been recommended highly to be, the, to be hired as the head coach of the Bridgewater Club, which was a kind of a shock to me because I'd never been the head coach of any club. Um, I had no experience with Canscape or any club programs, um, never run a Canscape program, never coached on a Canscape program, Never didn't PA or assist on a Canscape program. I knew nothing about Canscape. Didn't know the badge system. Didn't know how to develop a Canscape program. Knew nothing about the whole process. And essentially, I told her that at the time. I said, I'd love to come out and work with you guys. I think believe they had ice two days a week. I'm going to say Thursdays and Saturdays, but that could be wrong. It might be, it might have been three days. Went Thursday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, but only two days of Canscape. I don't remember. I think it was two days a week. Um, I told her, you know, I can make myself available for those two days a week and, you know, work myself into being um, the head coach of the club. But I've got way too much to learn. I've got way too many blank spots where I don't know how to run the club. And the president gave me this lovely speech saying that I was highly recommended and they really wanted me to do it. And they tried other coaches, but uh, nobody was available. And uh, that the club, the executive could run the club itself. Now, any coach would find this laughable, but at the time I didn't know any different. So they said that they had paid their previous coach uh, a fairly large sum of money. I think they told me, but I'm not sure what it was. I can't remember what it was at the time. To write up a booklet of how you run your programs through the course of the year. Uh, kind of a Canscape manual from the club's running perspective, from the executive. So they said they would run everything themselves, that all I had to do was show up, and assess Canscape badges. That was it. I had two duties to do as the head coach. Uh, but I still turned it down. Uh, pretty adamantly, I said, I am absolutely not capable of being your head coach. I'm not capable of running your club. Please get someone else to do it, and I'd be happy to come full-time to assist them to help with your club, to learn the ropes, so to speak, from someone else, to mentor with someone else, anyone else. Um, and they said, okay, they'd keep looking. Um, I believe through the summer they contacted me two more times, and both times said we haven't been able to find anyone. Maybe just one more time. We haven't been able to find anyone. No, I think it was twice more. Uh, we really want you to be our head coach. Could you please be our head coach? And uh, I refused all three times adamantly. I didn't say, well, maybe if you can't find anyone else. No, I was not wishy-washy at all. I was like, this is a job I cannot do. I cannot run Canscape. I cannot run a club. I cannot be your head coach. 
Um, I'm willing to put all the time in, but I do not have any of the experience or knowledge or any kind of education necessary to have me run your club. And each time they said, oh, no, no, you don't need to do anything. Just show up. Assess cans, get badges. So that's it. Um, so they said they'd find someone all three times. And they called me, I believe their club started in October, their Canscape programs. So they called me to confirm their starting date and time, which I believe it was a Saturday morning uh, in, I'm going to say, mid-October. And I showed up at, uh, it, it was early in the morning, I believe it was maybe a 10, 30, 11 o'clock start time. So I was there at about an hour early because I didn't know how long it would take to get there and I wanted to get there, you know, in time to start to learn the ropes from whoever they had hired to be their head coach to run Canscape and to coordinate with the head coach and find out who the head coach was. So I showed up the first day and uh, was shocked to find that uh, I was met by uh, two of the other executives, I think, and they, they said, okay, we're, we're on it. Ron and I have 45 minutes. Um, is there anything you need us to do? And I'm like, what do you mean is there anything I need you to do? I'm not the head coach. Um, and they said, yes, you are. And they seemed very confused, which again, like I said, communication issues. The only person I'd been talking to was the president, I think. So I was, sh I was kind of shocked and I would have probably freaked out, um, and, and left, um, under other circumstances. But, um, luckily that year I had started doing Canscape in two other clubs. I always did can do Canscape in two or three clubs. And that year I started in, I believe three different clubs. Um, I'm not completely sure of the timeline. I believe it was Shearwater and St. Margaret's Bay that year I started in. And they both started their winter seasons about two or three weeks beforehand. And they had some coaching meetings and some update meetings and some Canscape standards meetings, each of the clubs to, I believe it was Shearwater that had the, was the most help. Um, cause they had, uh, like a two hour PA training meeting that where they went over the whole purpose of Canscape and the whole program, delivery program and stuff like that. So I, I went to, I, I attended all of these meetings at all these other clubs in preparation for helping in Bridgewater. So I wasn't completely clueless by the time I got to Bridgewater. But it was still a big shock to show up the first day and say, yeah, by the way, you're in charge. So the first thing I asked is, um, um, and, uh, you know, I asked for a list of the skaters. I asked for a list, who's on the ice. They said, oh, we don't have that. I was like, oh, okay, um, how am I going to assess badges if I don't know what the kids' names are or what badges they're on? Do you have a list of who's on what badges? No, no list of kids, no list of who's on what badges, no name tags, no markers. Uh, most of the equipment wasn't there. Um, the only thing they kept saying to me was, uh, the only asset they had was, and they didn't have a Canscape coordinator. They had no one down at the ice, no parent, no executive member running Canscape from off the ice, um, which isn't a must in all clubs, but if you have a coach who said he can't run Canscape and you have said as a club you can run the Canscape session yourself, kind of important to have someone there. Now, there were executive members there, but I believe the president and one or two other members were there because their kids were helping on Canscape, but uh, there was nobody running Canscape, nobody. They did have an asset. The only asset they had was they had, I believe, a, an 18-year-old uh, or 17-year-old stay-at-home mom, single mom or something like that, who was had been helping them with the Canscape for a couple of years and was running the pre-can program. She would take the kids under five years old, and she started when I believe it was five or six, and she'd, um, you know, she had a box of toys and teaching aids. Those were the only teaching aids the club had, and she was in charge of them all and held them all and took them home with her. And uh, she'd bring them out with her when she brought the pre-can out, which is about 20 minutes into our can skate session. Um, you know, the, the setup of the session was fine. Um, and every time I would ask for something, they would say, oh, well, I'm sure this assistant you have will, uh, will have what you need. Didn't really have anything I need. Didn't have name tags, didn't have a master list, didn't have any of the stuff you need to run a can skate session. Uh, they also gave me seven junior, I believe it was seven, students. One senior, six junior. There was a whole history behind that, but that really doesn't have to do with my club work specifically. Although they obviously they leak into each other. 
Anyway, so the Cansgate session went on, and um, after the first day, the president came up to me and said, oh, that did seem to go okay. Did not go okay, not, not by what I know of current standards of what a Cansgate session should go. Um, you know, I didn't know, I didn't even barely knew the Cansgate badges, but the way they had it set up is this is with the old Cansgate. They had basic elementary, beginner elementary basic, novice one, two, three, four. And they had seven PAs, I believe, seven kids helping with those seven groups. So they each were in charge of their groups. Uh, the badge one and grab badge two groups were huge. And the PAs were quite decent. Uh, you know, I don't know if I would feel the same nowadays, but uh, knowing nothing back then, I thought they were very competent. Um, certainly they kept the kids occupied most of the time. Um, and they did some work. Occasionally, I would they would come to me and ask, why isn't this person passing this badge? And I would say, because they can't stop with the right foot. And then they would work on it for the next couple of weeks, and there would be significant improvement on, on the development areas that were needed. So the PAs were not the problem. Um, I mean, really, the problem was me, but the problem wasn't me, because I told them from the very beginning, from our very first conversation, this is not something I can do. Uh, I can't remember if it was the first day, but the president came up to me fairly early and asked if I needed anything for the program. And I said, yeah, I need a list of mass of kids in each badge, each group, each badge group. I need a list of what badges they're on. I need names, first and last names. I need them to have name tags, which in my other two candidates, every kid had a name tag. No name tags in, in Bridgewater. Um, I need, uh, um, I, think that was, I think that was all I think I knew I needed at the time. So about three or four weeks went by, and you know it, it wasn't a terrible Canscape program. You know, kids, because the PAs, my helpers, were all in their the same groups they were familiar with. They knew how to teach their skills. They knew their skills, and they kind of knew which kids they had acquired. Um, I don't know how they knew that. There was no lists, um, but. I think they had a clipboard. Each PA got a clipboard with a list of what kids were in their group, maybe on them. But I know we had some trouble because there were some kids in badge one and two, beginner and elementary, uh, who didn't have very good speaking skills, and we didn't have their names. And when we asked them their names, we couldn't get their names because they couldn't tell us what their last name was or how to spell their name, or or they were you know, mumbling, so we couldn't really hear what they were saying. It was you know there were little things that should not have been going on that were going on that. Nowadays, I would know how to deal with that, how to fix that, and how to address that. And back then, just I had no clue. Um, so about four weeks into this, it was going. People were passing badges. Uh, again, I was very unaware of what standards I should be looking for, how quickly should be, people should be going through badges, what the session should look like off the ice. I just I, it, There was too much new that I was able to really focus down on any, any of the particular areas. Um, but the president came and asked me again what I asked, what I needed, and I, I gave her a list of um, teaching aids that I wanted. I believe markers were on it, um, you know, a stop sign for red light, green light, a few other options. And um, again, there were no name tags on the kids, no name tags, uh, no master list of kids. Um, you know, the paperwork, the, the, the paperwork coming into the program was almost non-existent. It, it, I certainly had nothing as a, as a coach. I wasn't given anything as the head coach and only coach on their Canscape sessions, um, which was pretty disturbing. Again, not as much to me back then because I didn't know it should be disturbing. Uh, but nowadays, I would certainly not tolerate any of the things that were going on then. So when about another month went by, and we're, I think, after Christmas now, and again, the session's okay, but it's not improving. Uh, some of the skills are improving because I'm pointing out to the PAs, you know, I'm, I'm not passing these particular things, but there wasn't a ton of movement from badge to badge, and there wasn't a ton of, nobody, I think, graduated from Canscape, um, which maybe for two months isn't that uh, unexpected, but uh, considering some started on the last batch, I should have seen a little bit more improvement. And again, because I was the only coach there having to get to seven groups, um, and the higher level groups were like one or two kids, they often didn't see me as much. Um, and I also assumed their PAs were more competent, so I would spend more time with the bad beginner elementary basic kids. Uh, anyway, still no name tags. Three months into the season. I didn't know most of the kids' names. 
because I had never seen their names. I didn't have any list of paper with their names. I didn't have any name tags. Didn't have any teaching aids. Um, the president came to me again and asked me, you know, we're having some complaints about the program. What can we do to fix it? You can do the list of things that I asked you to do at the beginning of the year and that I asked you to do a month ago and that I'm asking you to do again today. My guy wrote it all out again. I said, here's my list. Can you do these things? She said, oh yeah, no problem. Not done again. This is the third time, three times, I gave her a written list of what needed to be done to have the Kansky session work better. It was never done. Nothing on the list was ever done. Nothing. So about four months in, they, I think it was four months in, they, and there was no music on the session either, not even background music. There was no music on. I didn't know there was supposed to be music. That was never part of my education in Dikansky or my coaching training or anything. Um, and I believe one of my other can skate sessions, they didn't use music either. It just wasn't considered a massive, I guess by Skate Canada, it was considered a massive aspect of the session. But um, again, without any experience myself, I didn't know it was a regular part of the program. So it just, it had a very lifeless, dead, uh, non-dynamic feel to the session. Uh, not a ton of movement. There was a lot of big groups standing around getting uh, taught. We didn't do circuits. Um, there was no movement around the ice. It, just compared to today's program, it was it was just a it was quite a terrible program. But compared to programs back then, it was not not quite as bad. Um, but I knew it wasn't as good as the other two clubs that I did can skate in, even close. So I showed up one Saturday. Actually, it wasn't a Saturday. It had to be a Thursday. It was a Thursday. I showed up one day for Canscape. And by the way, one of the things that annoyed me, I forgot to mention this, is there were three other coaches in the club. I believe three. There was at least two. And there was three other coaches in the club. Three other coaches who coached full-time in the club. None of whom would help with Canscape. All of whom were experienced with Canscape. Um, super annoying that they wouldn't even come to help the club with Canscape. Um, but I was the one who I said couldn't do it. I was being forced to do it. And not being compensated, by the way, with much in the way of, I was getting no travel allowance, no gas, no nothing. Uh, my coaching rate was very low, so I was essentially coming at a loss to Bridgewater every week. Um, one Thursday, another one of the coaches, probably the most experienced one with Canscape programs, showed up before, was there with their skates on as I came in for Canscape and said, okay, what are we going to do today? I'm like, well, what are you doing here? Why are you here? She said, well, oh, didn't they tell you? I'm like, no. She said, oh, the club didn't think the can skate session was going well, so they asked me to stay and help you run the session. And I was like, you've been here all year. I told them at the beginning of the year I didn't want to run the session. Why didn't you do it at the beginning of the year? I didn't tell her any of this, but I was like, what? The hell is going on here and they didn't tell me and she was super mad they didn't tell me so they basically asked another coach to take over the session from me um, without even telling me or letting me know and still by the way I hadn't done my list of requirements for the session any of the time I did them so this coach who shall go nameless who came to help me super professional by the way she was very good at, at uh, what was again a very thumbs down situation she said, you know, what do you want me to do? What can I add to the session? What needs to be done? And I told her, well, you know, three times I gave the president the list of what I needed to be done on Canscape, and it was not done. Nothing on the list was done. No name tags, no master list, no teaching aids, no toys, no markers, nothing. No pylons, you know, nothing. Um, and she... Again, to her credit, got a little bit angry for me and said, well, I'll fix this, don't worry about it. And Saturday I came to Canscape and my entire list was done on Saturday. And this was one of my biggest learning experiences in skating. So I was like, how the hell did you get the president and the club to do all this stuff in two days when I couldn't get them to do it in four months? And she said, this killed me. She said, well, um, Thursday night, before I left the rink, before I left Bridgewater, because she lived in Halifax too, she said, I called the executive members that I knew. I told them to come into the rink for an emergency meeting immediately. 
and I screamed at them for a half hour for not getting any of the things done you had asked to be done. Lo and behold, everything was done. And it was like it totally blew my mind that me giving a list and requesting things and saying I need these things in a professional, mature, calm manner did nothing. Didn't phase anyone. But this other coach going in and ordering them to come into the rink and screaming at the executive about how terrible a job they were doing got things to happen immediately. Huge insight into human behavior and human conditioning. Um, and really, I think, really lowered my respect for, for people in skating, skating executives. I can't believe that's the way that you have to get things done as a coach, but I have seen it in a dozen situations since that that is the only way in many cases to get things done, that people don't respond to calm, professional demeanors. They respond to frenzied, insane behavior, which is, I, again, I can't bring myself to do, which has caused me a lot of problems over the years, getting things done, being effective. But what can you do? Anyway, so from then, she, uh, you know, there was no music. The, the other coach asked me, do you mind if I bring in music next week? We really should have music on the session. There has to be music on can skate, skate sessions, which I, again, never heard of. So I was like, all right, go ahead. So she brought in some really good um, action songs that we used to warm up and cool down. And just really, the session got tremendously better immediately. Um, and I can't, I believe I left at the end of... I can't remember exactly when I left. I'm sure it was at the end of that season. But the reason why I give it a thumbs down at the end is, first of all, very negative feelings for me about the whole experience for all the reasons I just went into. But second of all, um, I noticed this is the first time I really had a, a, a weird experience with coaching. It was about an hour for me to drive in and back from Halifax, and I started to notice on the way in, I would get stomach cramps and feel nauseous and sick and ill um, to pretty serious degrees sometimes. Not ever to the point of vomiting, but you know, I would feel just absolutely terrible, like I was gonna die coming into the rink. And it took me about, and then every time I left the rink at the end of the day, driving back to Halifax, I would feel you know light and refreshed and uh, uh, free and it it happened gradually so it took me probably about seven or eight trips to realize oh my god uh, I'm having like these anxious panic attacks going into this rink because they're not doing any of the things I'm asking them to do this is before the other coach started helping me but it, it got worse and worse and worse and worse and even when I consciously realized what was happening it didn't diminish the effects So about my last couple of weeks there, I was really, really unhappy with the situation. Oh, this is really long. I don't want this to go over a half hour. Maybe I'll just go into one of my special, um, no, I'll go into two. So I had two, two of my seven special encounters. One was a skater, one of the first really talented skaters that I had. Um, I don't remember the specifics, but I, I had had a couple conversations with, I'd helped other coaches get their kids to land access. And it always happened in two or three lessons. It was never hard. And I never didn't understand when I talked to other coaches why they would complain about how hard it was to get people to land access. And I worked at that point with maybe just short of maybe a dozen kids. And I had a kid in this club that when I started with her, she didn't know what a lap or a flip was. So we were starting basically from scratch. Um, and we got to an axle and she landed an axle within, I mean, two lessons and started doing axles and started laying a double sow, I think two or, three, uh, two or three weeks after we started working on it and came fifth or sixth at provincials that year, her first year. She went up to preliminary, not even pre-preliminary. She went up a category, didn't even compete in the lowest category and then came fifth out of like 16 or 18 or something in that category of provincials uh, landing axles. So, and this is after, you know, only skating for five months, six months. So it was really my first experience and my benchmark on, this is somebody who skated two days a week, didn't do cross training, didn't do sports specific training, just 
skated two days a week with me. Didn't even get that many lessons because I had five, uh, five or six juniors on the ice. So it was my first experience with um, accelerated on ice learning with the skater. So that was one of my great experiences, one of my great learning special experiences. The other one was an interesting one. I had another kid who, uh, uh, how do I say this nicely? I think I taught her on the ice before I talked to her mother. And I taught her on the ice and asked her to do things like waltz jump, sow cow toe loop. She didn't know anything that I asked her to do. Even when I demonstrated something, she would often go out and do something different. So she could do things, but she had no idea what she was doing, no organization, no no concept of vocabulary or, or um, what different types of moves or, or pushes or technique were. Uh, no information whatsoever. And if I asked her to do a waltz jump five times in a row, she would do five different jumps and had no idea that she was doing different things, had no idea that nothing that she did was a waltz jump. Um, I don't think she ever did a jump that, or an element that I actually asked her to do. Completely mixed up in the head with her technique. Uh, after I found this out, I talked to her mother, and her mother was like, oh, she's an awesome skater. She's, she can do all this stuff. She can land up to a lot. Uh, she can do all this stuff, she's great, she's accelerating, she's really excited about skating, and I realized that it was the mother that was really excited about skating. This was my first experience with uh, the crazy mom, the crazy involved mom. And this isn't a story about her, that would be a negative experience. But with the kid, who when I started with her didn't know what a backspin was, didn't know what a sit spin was, didn't know what a camel spin was, couldn't do a lot of surf lift, couldn't differentiate between a waltz jump, a sow count, and a toe loop. Seemed to have a pretty serious learning disorder. Um, I really only taught her, I think, for six months over that Christmas, over that winter. And by the time I was done, from this starting point of her not being able to do anything, she didn't know landing, she didn't know proper cross cut, she didn't know, she had no technique on anything. Um, by the end, she was landing up to lots on demand. She had sorted out her jumps. She knew which jumps were which. She could execute them. She could explain how to do them. She knew what, uh, one foot spin, back spin, sit spin, camel spin. Her camel spin was five rotations. This is in pre-preliminary ladies. Uh, again, skating two days a week. Um, so this was just, uh, um, this was my first experience with inheriting uh, a hot mass, I guess you would call it, and turning it into something really special and amazing and really on a, a very quick time. It really only took me probably three months to start really turning things around and, and turning what was a completely mixed up, screwed up, messed up skater into something with exceptional quality, exceptional execution. Um, and there was something almost more gratifying about that than there was about the other skater I mentioned who I just started from scratch and learned things but whoop, really quick. There's something much nicer about inheriting a hot mess and sorting it out and turning it into um, something spectacular. Anyway, that's my experience with the club. Um, we didn't really have any like screaming matches or fighting matches, so the thumbs down at the end was mainly for the you know extreme nausea and um, what did I call it earlier? Stress. Uh, can't remember what I called it. Anyway, on the drive in, the, the fact that I got to the point in the club where my uh, my feeling towards my work and my relationship with the club and my communication was so bad that I was getting physically ill. Um, I don't know that I've ever felt that before with a club. I think that's the only time I ever felt that with a club. So it's definitely two thumbs down. Uh, you know, I had some good experiences there, but the whole thing from beginning to end was just an absolute nightmare. Huh, that's it. Club number one.